let's move on to our next segment. Our next segment is first line therapies for relapsing MS. Um, and so uh, Patricia, why don't you start out with, with the concept of first line okay. therapies and, and whether that's a reasonable concept to continue. Right, so I hate the concept. I don't like the concept of first line, second line, third line. We should be able to use any agent that we feel is the best choice in our patient initially. Now, that having been said, what are first line? Well, obviously the injectables, the varieties of glutaramiracetate and interferon beta. With regard to the orals, I'd consider every oral but cladribin to be a first line agent. That's the natural spot to use an oral. Why is cladribin not listed? Well, I think in the label that cladribin got in the United States, they, they, did not, they did not recommend using it in a first attack patient. I think it could be, it could be, but that's bending the curve a little bit. And then when we go to the infusibles monoclonal antibodies, I think they're all first line with the exception of mitoxantrone that we basically never use in the United States and alemtuzumab that has been recommended in the US label as a third line agent. So I feel very comfortable using the orals, using um, several of the monoclonals, infusibles, and, uh, and certainly the injectables as quote, first line agents, unquote. Okay. I, I, I cannot agree more. Uh, I, I would like to support your concept that we should be free as, as physicians to decide uh, which agent we are using in a given patient. However, I, I have to say as an, as an MS center, as a university hospital, we are a little bit free, you know, to, to have a certain concept. However, when it comes to reimbursement, the office-based neurologists are not allowed to um, to go on on these treatments. And this is why we are a little bit limited just based on this uh, reimbursement situation. But from the pathophysiology behind, I, I cannot agree more. If we have a given patient with a highly active disease, I think we should not you know, play around um, with something like platform therapies, but we should right be able to start with uh, a monoclonal, for instance. So. so so when you say they're limited, so the, the clinicians out in the community, what can they start with? I mean, if, if it's really a highly active patient um, demonstrating more than 92 lesions in the MRI, more than two relapses with an EDSS progression, they are also allowed to start right away with a highly active agent. We have one difference here in Europe compared to the US, and this is the approval of Fingolimod, which is in our country approved as an agent only for highly active patients, while it's in your spectrum of, of uh, regular or of uh, first line therapies, if I uh, recall correctly. So this is a difference. And this brings me also a little bit to the approval of new um, sphingosine one phosphate modulators. But in the majority of, of patients, we have to start more or less with a platform therapy or first line therapy, and then we can have this kind of escalation concept. And, and this is, in my opinion, not the way to go. So are any of the orals in your first lines? Yeah, um, uh, dimethyl fumarate and uh, teraflunamide are among the first line therapies. And, and tell me again, what was the definition of highly active? Highly active should be, um, if the patient is treatment naive, then we are asking for two relapses leading to EDSS progression and a significant T2 load normally defined as nine or more lesions. And I think you, you will agree that this is far too late to qualify these patients as highly active. Exactly, exactly. And Wallace? Yeah, so I, I think practice in um, the, the UK, so British neurologists are increasingly using um, early intensive therapy uh, in, in patients with newly diagnosed relapsing MS. And um, in, until um, uh, alemtuzumab was suspended by the European Medicines Agency uh, last year and investigated in detail, we were using quite a lot of alemtuzumab first line at our centre. Increasingly, in the last year, that's been replaced by either using ocrelizumab or, in some patients, perhaps more like the ones that Sven describes, um, cladribine also. Um, we also have access to all of the oral medications, first line, with the exception of fingolimod. And why not fingolimod? 
for Golomod, like in, in, in Germany, is uh, re reserved for patients who uh, are a second line or very um, highly active. And that, that's really on the basis of um, concerns around the time it was licensed over cardiac safety. Although I must say with long-term clinical experience with this drug, I think that's become less of an issue. And it's become clear that really that's a, a, only um, a problem with uh, the first dose. And what's happened in Europe with valentizumab? Were you using that as first line? We were using it first line, and we've still got the option of using it first line in people whose MS is um, taking a very aggressive course, although uh, uh, generally these days we're mainly using it as uh, a second or, or lace line therapy in people who have continued to experience relapses and or MRI activity on, on a first line treatment.